Morning. This is the Shine team, and this is May. Um, today's topic, um, special welcome, first of all, to our guests and visitors here today. No doubt you know that today we're talking about depression, and it's a really relevant topic, especially in New Zealand. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be looking, um, I don't know if you've seen the ads for the bipolar, but um, it kind of gives the idea that once you've got it, that you have to live with it, and that everyone sort of has to understand that. Um, so we're going to be looking at what God has to say about that today, and um, also how it can come about, and how God can set us free from it, amen? Great. So, um, moving on, if we could have tithes and offerings... I'm just going through, but we at Hosanna, we're committed to giving. Oh, that's better than I can see, y'all. <laughs> so, um, and we're just going to pray for that right now. And there's no um, obligation for you to give if you're a visitor here today as well. Dear Lord, you are so faithful to us, Lord God. And we are committed to you, Lord God. And we just pray that what we give to you today will be used for your purpose, your glory. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Cool. So um, also a reminder at the end of the service, down the middle aisle, through those doors, we've got Cafe Zana. They're your crew and they're waiting to serve you tea, coffee and some food. Um, next week, and I'm running through this a bit fast, so I'll give some time for the offerings to go around. <laughs> next week, our topic is, what's our topic? <laughs> All paths lead to God. It's really interesting because we're going to be countering that idea that all religions lead to the same place. So it's a very interesting topic, especially to bring your friends along to. It's very interesting. So without further ado, this is May again and her shine team. So we invite you to stand and we're going to worship God today. Thank you, Olivia. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. 
Oh, no, nah, I'm fine. Oh, Do you want a biscuit? Thanks. Oh, no, nah, I'm trying to lose weight, eh? Yeah, mm. me too. But actually, I just might have one. So how's that going? It's not eight, half a packet last night. You're joking. No. So how's the gym thing? Gym thing? I haven't been in ages. That's not like you. I know. I just mm. can't be bothered, eh? Can't be bothered with a lot lately. Well, you have been looking really tired. You ain't pregnant, are you? What? Of course oh, not! Down, far out. Well, then what's going on then? Did you have a bad night last night? Every night. Well, what do you mean? Well, I just can't sleep. Mine just keeps ticking over. Well, hello, you could have rung me. At three o'clock? Yeah. Next time. This mess. What's going on? <sighs> I don't know. Can't do it. What do you mean? <laughs> and I've got the washing and obviously the stuff in there, and then the kids come home from school. Mm. It's okay. I mean, I can't figure out what to have for tea. And I, I just know I yelled at them. Oh, gosh, girl. I don't mean I love them. I know. Look, I know you love them. We all know you love your kids. But well, why didn't you tell me things were this bad? I you're so busy. I just don't want to bother you. Gosh, girl. You know I'm never too busy for you. You know that. I'm just so unhappy. It's all right. Everything's falling apart. I think I'm going crazy. 
No, honey, look, you're not crazy. Believe me, I know crazy. <laughs> but you ain't crazy. Really? Really. What's wrong with me? Broken clock is a comfort It helps me sleep tonight Maybe you can't stop tomorrow From stealing all my time And I am here still waiting Though I still have my doubts I am damaged at best Like you've already figured out I'm falling apart I'm barely breathing With a broken heart That's still beating In the pain There is healing In your name I find meaning So I'm hoping Broken locks were a warning You got inside my head I tried my best to be guarded I'm an open book instead And I still see your reflection Inside of my eyes That are looking for purpose This is looking for life I'm falling apart I'm barely breathing With a broken heart That's still beating In the pain Is there healing In your name I find me Left me here alone I may have lost my way now Haven't forgotten my way home I'm falling apart I'm barely breathing With a broken heart That's still beating In the pain
Welcome. And they do an awesome job this morning. Let's give it up. Well, depression. And Gary rang me and said, um, I'd like you to do a message. And I said, oh, yeah, that's, that's fine. What, what are we doing? He said, depression. I said, oh, great, thanks. Talk about a hospital pass. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a really interesting topic. And um, hopefully this morning, I, I, I'm not going to pretend that I have all the answers for you um, because I don't. Depression is probably one of the most complicated illnesses that we have. Uh, it's known in the mental health industry as the common cold of mental health. It's uh, more prevalent than you realize. And um, while I've been researching for this, it's been quite an eye-opener as to just how uh, infected our society is especially the Western world, with this disease, because really that's what it is. And therefore, if it's a disease, it can be healed. Even though, when you're in the midst of it, it might seem like it's impossible. So how common is it? I'll just get my little remote thing out here. So how common is depression? Well, in New Zealand, one in five women and one in ten men will become depressed at some point in their lives. That's based on statistics from a survey in 2006. That's pretty common. So if you're a woman, you're twice as likely to suffer from depression than if you're a man. But interestingly, Depression can lead to things like suicidal thoughts. And they reckon 70 to 80% of suicides are committed by people who are clinically depressed. And um, when it comes to that, men win hands down. Men are most likely to go through. More women try it, but more men succeed. In the UK... Suicide is the second biggest killer of young men next to road accidents. That's a huge problem. It really is. Anyone can become depressed, but it's most common in young people between 16 and 24. That's a scary thought. If you're a young person, that's pretty out there, really. And in the last 50 years, depression in Western cultures has increased tenfold. So, why is that? Why would depression increase that much? And I think if you look around us and the way we live and the way lives have changed and society has changed in the last 50 years, maybe there's some answers for you in there. And it's actually very, as those statistics bear out, common. Famous people who suffered from depression include King David, George Washington, did you know that? Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill, Boris Yeltsin, Princess Di, Mark Twain, we all know John Kerwin from the ads, John Cleese, and most recently Heath Ledger doesn't seem to matter who you are when it comes to depression anybody's a target it doesn't actually it has nothing to do with socioeconomic status how much money you have how much fame you have how much power you have it doesn't care it has very little to do with that there are um, various types of depression but I think the thing you need to realize is that you're not alone. You know, if you're, a, if you're a person here, with those stats, one in five, the likelihood is that there's a few people in this room that are suffering from depression. And if not, then you'll know somebody who is. So it's pretty in your face out there. 
And the interesting thing is when you're in depression, you know, one of the third words that came through in that song, that last song in the dance, was being alone. And that's one of the things about depression. You feel like you're alone. Well, you're not. There's a lot of people that are in it with you. Major depression is one of the types. There's five types of depression that are sort of bundled, and there's a whole lot of subtypes. It's a very complex thing because it's quite difficult to, to determine where depression, where um, sadness and just lo a low mood st stops and depression starts, and there's, there's any number of things. But they've split it up into five major categories, and the first one is major depression, and that's a mood that lasts for at least two weeks. That's a low mood that'll last for about two weeks, and that's also referred to as clinical depression or unipolar depression. The next one is psychotic depression, which is a depressed mood which includes symptoms, symptoms of psychosis. Psychosis is or involves seeing or hearing things that are not there, hallucinations, feeling like everyone's against you, paranoia, and having delusions. So that's sort of out there, that one. You, wanna, you, you really don't want to have that one. And then there's dysthymia, which is the next one, which is a less severe depressed mood that lasts for years. That's just a general low feeling. Probably a, um, a description of that, that one is people who are, would be, you'd describe as melancholic, who are sort of, you know, pretty low key. They're not, they very rarely show any sort of high excitement or anything like that. Then that's, that's dysthymia. I had to look up how to pronounce that one. Mixed depression and anxiety. One of, one of the things about depression and anxiety is that they very often coexist. So if you've got one, quite likely that you're going to have the other because the two are quite um, linked. So that's a combination of symptoms of depression and anxiety. And then the last one, and the one that I'm very familiar with, is bipolar disorder. It involves periods of feeling low, depressed, and high or manic. And... Um, my brother was diagnosed with bipolar, and um, it's it's a very, and yeah, it's a very uh, debilitating thing, because one day you're high, and then the next day, for no apparent reason, you're down low, and the lows are very, very, very low. So, what are the symptoms? It's quite a long list. So the symptoms include irritability or feeling sad, grumpy or miserable most of the time. Now, my kids would probably say that's me. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I do have moments of not being grumpy. Feeling restless or lacking in energy. Crying or getting angry or upset for no obvious reason, as was portrayed in our drama here this morning. Cry... Uh, Losing interest in things you used to enjoy, you know. All of a sudden, the things that used, you used to find fun and, and enjoyable just stop being so and you just can't be bothered anymore. Cutting off from your family or friends. Feeling worthless or guiltless or guilty about things that weren't your fault. That's one of the, one of the sad things about being depressed is that everything that's wrong in the world is your fault. It's a huge burden to carry. Feelings of emptiness or loneliness, trouble concentrating, forgetting things, losing a lot of weight or gaining a lot of weight, having sleeping problems or not being able to sleep, or conversely, sleeping a lot. So you see why it's so complicated. Thinking about death or having suicidal thoughts, tiredness, changes in appetite, low self-esteem, problems with concentration, and if you're married, Reduced sex drive. All of these are indicators of depression, but not individually. In order to be diagnosed, you need to have at least five of these operating in your life over at least a two-week period before clinicians will start to consider that you are depressed clinically. Feeling down for a day or two is not depression. 
it gives you an eyesight, an inkling of what depression is actually like. Imagine your worst day that you've had and that going on and on and on and on and on. That's what depression is like. It's a bit like when the All Blacks lose to Australia, really, but it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> Yay. See, I got the right colours on this morning. I wanted to be in the winning colours. <laughs> so depression lasts for, for a long period. It can also, some of these symptoms on their own can also be symptoms of some physical problem, some physical illness, so they're not necessarily just about depression, okay? So if you've got one or two of them, see a doctor because chances are that there's something else wrong and it's good if you can find out. The other thing is don't try and self-diagnose. That's a dangerous thing. <laughs> that is not something you want to be doing. You want to recognize the signs and then get help. It is something that you will need help to deal with. So what are some of the factors that cause depression? Well, brain chemistry. This is, there are physical components to depression, okay? And one of the things that happens is that the chemicals in your brain that cause the, that allow the, the transmitters to do their thing get like clogged up and, um, and the transmitters just don't do their job properly. And so there are drugs that you can take that are designed to improve those flows, okay? There are side effects, but the drugs can actually help. And that's where there's a physical change in the brain chemistry. The other one is there's genetic factors. If you have depression in your family, then you've got a one and a half to three times chance that you will suffer from depression. Doesn't necessarily have to be. That's not, that's not a curse. Believe me, it's not a curse. But it is something that you, it, it's good to be aware of because you can, you can recognize the signs early and then make changes and adjust the way you're thinking. The other things are stressful events. So if you've got a trauma or a crisis or, or, or life transition, <clears throat> for example, if somebody in the family dies or you break up in a relationship, a relationship comes to an end, or some uh, job, losing a job. Even, you know, one of, one of the times that, uh, that I felt quite, quite depressed was um, when I got made redundant, even though I was working in the construction industry and I knew when I started that I was going to be made redundant, when it actually happens, it makes you feel low. You know, you feel like, oh, why me? Why didn't they pick somebody else this time? Why did it have to be me? And so you start doubting your own, your own um, capabilities or whatever, and, and that leads to wrong thinking, which leads to depressive episodes. And the other things are spiritual factors. So there are spiritual components to it. <clears throat> so it can be, and this is not the absolute, but it can be the result of sin. There's an example in the Bible. King Saul um, had been disobedient to God, so God took his spirit from Saul as a result. Sin led to guilt. Sin can lead to guilt, even for Christians. Okay? And guilt contributes significantly to it. Okay? So it's... Oops, what have I done? Mr. Page. That's helpful. <coughs> but sin does... Sin can contribute. So... Those are, the, those are the, the, the core sort of factors, if you like, that, that can cause depression. And what are some of the risk factors? Well, family conflict or illness, the loss of someone close, stress, including loneliness, as we've talked about, drug or alcohol use. Now, th this one's an interesting one because it can lead to depression, but depression can also lead to that. So that's quite a, quite a complicated sort of thing. Unemployment, physical illness, all of these things. Women, particularly at, uh, after giving birth, is a, is a 
relatively high risk period of time for you. And, um, you know, you can do something about that. If you recognize that you're feeling low for an extended period after giving birth, then seek help because you don't have to stay there, okay? Help can be found. Just catch up on my notes. There it is. Look at that. I'll go back to that sin one. In 1 Samuel 16, 14, it says, Now the spirit of the Lord had, set, had left Saul, and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and fear. Okay? So, there's definitely a spiritual component in there as well. So what do I do? What if I think I have depression? Like I said, and I can't stress this enough, get help. You don't have to work this out on your own. And in actual fact, you won't be able to. The reality is, you know, like Catherine so powerfully portrayed here this morning. And let's, let's give her a hand, eh? Because that was, that was awesome. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> you can't see why it's happening and you can't see a way out. It's absolutely dark, dark dark place to be. Winston Churchill had a phrase that he termed for it. He, he called it the black dog. He was, he was hounded by the black dog and that was a, a turn of phrase and it's actually um, quite commonly used now as a, a um, term for, to describe depression because depression in itself has, has quite, a lot, uh, quite a stigma attached to it and um, for whatever reason uh, people think if they say the word that that's the end of their life. If they admit that they're depressed, that's the end of their life as they know it. In actual fact, it's quite the opposite. So what to do if you're feeling depressed? Well, the good news is most people recover, but you do need to get help. Talk to someone you trust about how you're feeling. So if you're sitting here this morning thinking, this is me, talk to somebody you trust and start the process of getting help. Don't try this on your own. I can't emphasize that enough. You cannot self-diagnose this thing. You need help to identify it. You can recognize some of the symptoms, but clinical depression is a physical condition that must be diagnosed by a physician. Okay? One of the things that... Uh, unfortunate circumstances don't cause it on its own, but it will compound it. It will increase your likelihood. One of the things that uh, some Christian communities believe is that clinical depression is always caused by sin. That's not the case. There is evidence to show that that is very much not the case. Yes, it can contribute, and in some circumstances that may very well be the case, but not always. And, you know, like any disease, I believe, and a lot of people here believe, that God can heal any disease, and depression is just another one of those. How can I help someone? Well, some do's. Some do's. Do learn as much as you can about depression. A great starting place that I found was, was a website called depression.org.nz, which is uh, the health department's website dealing specifically with depression, and it describes some of these things, and it tells you where you can get some help. And the person who's depressed won't necessarily be able to do that themselves, so they might need you to help them do that. Accept the person as they are. You know, they are the way they are. It's not what they want. You know, I can, I can say, when, in, the, in the time when I was depressed, I didn't want that. If I could have changed it on my own, I would have, absolutely. Have realistic expectations. Don't expect them to be all whoopee do because you are because it, it takes time, it's a process. Encourage positive thinking. One of the things that I dis have discovered through this process is that I really believe that depression is really another phrase for wrong thinking. We are thinking wrong thoughts that trap us and make us feel powerless to do anything about our lives or to change the things around us. We allow the things around us to dictate where we are and how we feel. 
So positive thinking, thinking about the future instead of where I am right now in the past and how I got here, start thinking about the future. And you can help people do that. Help them to get help, as I said. Try not to take things personally. You know, when a person's down and you're not able to lift them up, sometimes you can take that as a, oh, you know, I'm no good to this person. Absolutely not. They're just not capable at that point of showing that sort of joyous emotion that you'd like to see them show. So don't take it personally. And the other thing, and, and this is really important as well, make sure if you are supporting somebody with depression that you have a support as well because it's a very, very dark place. It really is. And you can get sucked into that darkness as well. So make sure that you have help as well. Some of the other things you can do to help yourself is if you're in depression yourself, you can do things like you know, watch a funny movie. Just lighten your, light, lighten, lighten your load up a bit. Cuddle your pet. Learn to recognize signs and triggers and when to give a bit of space. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> it's a very dangerous place. Somebody said to me a wee while ago, and I, I thought it was quite, quite, quite good advice, your mind is a very dangerous place and you should never go there alone. Very good advice. And be careful when you're, when you're going into somebody else's mind as well because that can be quite dangerous. You can see there's lots of traps and, uh, you know, they're just waiting to cut you down. So how, how else can I help someone with depression? Some don'ts, and these are really important. Don't tell them to snap out of it or to be a man. If they could, they would. They can't. That's the whole point. That's what depression is. If you could snap out of it, it's not depression, okay? That's the whole power of it. It traps you, and it's a darkness that, that, and a hole that you just can't get out of. Don't be an armchair general sitting there telling them how to do and how they should feel and what they should be doing. It's not, uh, that's not going to help either. So there's some, some hints. Now I'm going to move on to something a little lighter hopefully about how you can actually see some light at the end of the tunnel you know I believe that that God can heal everything any condition and depression is just another one of those conditions but sometimes it's not an instant process one of the books that in the Bible that I've really struggled with is, is a book called Job and interestingly Job is um, one of the scriptures that, uh, that, I, that I found on, on, that talks about depression. And Job in chapter 30, verse 16, he says, and now my life seeps, seeps away, depression haunts my days. I'm not surprised, Job lost everything. His life around him just collapsed. And Job couldn't see a reason for it. You know, he was a good, righteous man. Depression happens to good people. But the good news is it can be healed. With the right help, there's a way through the tunnel. And the Bible says that Jesus came to set us free. And depression is just another form of bondage in our mind. You know, Scripture talks a lot about the fact that uh, the battle for salvation, for our, for our freedom, is in our mind. You know, I think uh, the Bible knows what it's talking about. The mind's an extremely powerful Thing. And when it gets out of skew, it can be very, very trapping as well. Jeremiah, the Lord said, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. One of the things that depression does is it steals that hope. It steals our joy. It steals our future. But, you know, if we can get into the right counseling, the right help, and sometimes it's a combination of counseling and drugs so that you can actually step out of, outside of that feeling, deal with those, those physical, physiological issues, and then get the counseling so that you can actually learn to think a different way. And that's what Scripture says, be transformed, be being transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what it's talking about. You know, you can have a change in the way that you think, but 
As I said, you can't do it, you can't do it alone. In 2 Corinthians, it says, We're pressed on every side by troubles, but we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. One of the things that depression does is it makes you think that you are the only one. Nobody else is like you. Nobody else can help you. I can't see. I can't change the way I'm feeling. Nothing. I, I can do nothing. That's not true. You know, if God is involved, get God involved and he can change that thinking. He can turn it around so that you start seeing that there is another way. Philippians 4, and this is one of my favorite verses, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything. Pray to God and then watch what he does with it. Depression is a very, very complicated problem. What I've talked about here this morning is not the one-way solution. There's a number of things. It's like you can't, even diagnosing depression is, is complicated because we're all individuals. We're all where we are today because of a whole lot of things that have happened in our past that make us who we are. And those things from our past can quite often cause us to think in ways that are not constructive or not helpful. Getting God involved can turn those thoughts around and start us thinking about the hope and the future that we have. So, God can heal depression. But, you know, if you're in a depressed place, you probably won't be able to see that. But somebody else who is in a good place with God can get alongside you and show you that there is another way. So, there's a lot of people that suffer from this this disease, you know, and we have the answer to the problem, and the answer is a relationship with Jesus, and then walking in obedience to him, changing the way that you think, so that you can actually get out of the trap, out of the hole, and look to the future, and start seeing that there is a bright future ahead, you know, God's desire for everyone in this room is that you would have joy everlasting and it can start today amen amen let's pray father god i want to thank you for for the journey that you took me on this week and the week before learning about this this disease father god it, it's it's so crippling lord and, and you look down and you see you see the people that are hurting and you see their pain and, you know, you reach down your hand uh, to each one of us and we can grab onto that hand. As it said in the words of that song, hold on, hold on to you because you can show us another way. So, Lord, I pray that for those that are, that are in that dark place, Lord God, that, Father God, you would shine your light into that darkness, that, Lord, they would see your light, your future, your hope, Lord God, that, that, Father, those of us that, are, that have loved ones who are suffering from this, that, Lord, you would give us patience, kindness, love, joy, peace, so that we can transfer that into their lives, Lord God. Father, we thank you that you uh, put us in community. You call us together. You created us to live together, Lord God, so that we can help one another. So, Lord, I pray that, that you would show us the way out, and the way to help others find the way out. In Jesus' name. And they all said? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Cafe Zana.